the final frontier of free speech. Views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and guests and do not necessarily reflect those of Vegas All Net Radio, its affiliates, or its parent company. Knowledge is power, and this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the News Hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Oh! Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Nevada Cannabis News with We Can. We have Perry Haichu on the first microphone, Kurt Dukoc, myself, I'm Jennifer Solis. Then we have Jason Sturtzman. <laughs> and finally, our very, very, very special guest and my friend, Lady Rako. What's up, everybody? Hi and I. Hello, hello. Rastafari. <laughs> Lady Rako is with the Sin City Profits, and she is the vice president of Nev- uh, Las Vegas or Nevada Normal. Welcome, Hi, everybody. Rico. Thank you for having me. I'm Thank stoked you. to be here. And Thank many you of you so that have given me your time, giving all of us your time, we much appreciate it. And many of you that have come out to our, our previous events in the past and uh, seen some of the live music, a lot of that was provided by Lady Rako here. So. Absolutely. She's been a longtime supporter of ours, and we support uh, her and her efforts and everything that she's doing now. And speaking of your efforts and what you're doing now, well, what do you got going on? Well, right now, I my biggest thing that I have going on is I am planning a reggae cancer benefit for my dear, dear friend, Bunny Cunningham. Oh. He is in stage five prostate cancer right now. He's been um, using a ganja therapy, you know, combined with some some other holistic um, therapies, and right he's, he's been doing doing okay, you know. And so we just want to support him in any way that we can, you know. Taking a financial load off of someone, you know, really helps to allevi- alleviate stress and you know make the journey a little bit easier. So, whatever we can do for Bunny, he's been just such a a big asset to the reggae community and also to the ganja community. He's been a really big supporter with me at all of the ganja events. So that's true. Yeah, that is really, true. Um, I, I feel really strongly, you know, to step out and help him now. And you know, and, and Bunny, you know, a longtime musician, a longtime reggae musician in this community. Um, you know, of course, he, just everybody. He's he's just a really great guy. Every time I've seen him, he's he's come out to several of the events and and donated his time too. And so, that's the least we could do is just to give back to people. That, Absolutely, you know, that we are do helping. what we can. You know, I mean, when 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 your friends are are down and out, there, there's just nothing you wouldn't do to help them. So. I encourage all of you guys out there, if if you know Bunny, even if you don't, come out and support. We're having a benefit for him on Sunday, January 17, 2016, at Backstage Bar and Billiards. It's on 601 South Fremont Street. Fremont East. Yes, it's like right by the beauty bar, insert coins in that area over there. Oh, right on. Um, and we're also asking for donations for... Uh, silent auction and raffle prizes so if you guys have those extra gift cards from Christmas laying around or you got two of something that you think would make a great raffle prize please you know come out and uh, hit up we can and see how you can donate you know De- well you know definitely and the, the thing is it doesn't even have to be ganja centric no. So, mm-hmm. you know, hey, if, hey, if you have a spa package, you know, <laughs> who doesn't want to go to the spa or, you yeah, know, definitely. take your kids to like definitely. Adventure Dome or something, you know, anything is, is really appreciated. And we'll be promoting this, uh, you know, throughout this month and, and, and coming up to the event. So if anybody feels like they not only if you can't give money or you can't give or you can't give like, a you know, a, a gift. How about giving your time? We need also people to sit at, at the tables to, to kind of help out in that capacity. And also, also you know, so, social media is such a powerful vehicle. Definitely. If you can't, you know, uh, make it even get on social media and help us by sharing our event, by telling people about it, and, and by encouraging other people to, to give what they can. Absolutely. Uh, I'm pretty sure we got an extra vape pen or so that we could donate. I'm sure we got, <laughs> we've a got a couple of things that. we yeah, can we'll donate see what for we sure. Can do, definitely. So. I'm looking forward to the show already. and It's going to be an awesome, awesome show. We've got a, a ton of people that are stepping up and donating their time to Bunny. We've got Jessica Manalo, ST1, 
Ludlow, Dante's Inferno, uh, Nashing, um, Bon Bud, DJ Green Lion. Irie. Um, it's just really, really, really growing. People are calling in Big Bamboo as well. So anyone else that wants to come, we have a live painter that's going to be painting. Um, Andrew DeLeon will be in the house. And his uh, finished piece will be silent auctioned at the end of the night. So, yeah. Come really out. Really cool. So to find out about this event, they would go on to uh, NV Normal uh, on Facebook. Is that correct? Uh, may, and maybe we're going to, I would hope that we're going to oh, post this on our weekend in, as well. Yes, okay. definitely. Yep, yes, our, and we also have an event page. Um, if you look for Reggae Cancer Benefit for Bunny Cunningham, it'll pop right up. Right on. RSVP and share it with your friends. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of giving back, in Denver, volunteers uh, give away free marijuana to the homeless on Christmas Eve. I'd like to be allowed to do that someday. <laughs> I think that would be a clever give back. Well, you know, I think it's becoming a, a lot more popular to kind of give out cannabis and give out meds. And we've been doing I'm it sorry, in but I've been doing that for years. <laughs> I, I will not give somebody like $5, but if I see like... You know, somebody sees like, dude, you got any money? I was like, nah, dude, but I got this roach. You want it? And he's like, <laughs> yes. I've never had somebody say no to a gifted joint or roach or, or something. I, you know what? Everyone That's the joy it, of it. No doubt. <laughs> it's great. They're like, I, I've had people complain about giving them change or giving them a hamburger. They're like, Shh, I don't want that shit. No one's ever said that about That's definitely That's you. definitely true. And you know what? what happens when you start giving stuff out? It starts coming back. It starts coming back. Somebody just gave me an ounce and said, if you know somebody that needs this, just give it to the person that needs it. And I was like, somebody just asked me like yesterday. Yes, pay it for it. It always what goes around, comes around. Always. It does. It does. It does. I guess I should um, adjust my statement slightly. I'll be happy when we can all legally do it without fear of potential repercussion. Yeah, and um, having to check their card and all that well, other stuff, too. I, I also have been in situations where I was smoking, and a homeless guy walks up, and he's like, hey, we got, what's going on? Um, I always feel not guilty but nervous to give them weed because like, I feel like they have such bad luck that if they were to get caught with it or something, like it would just they be would more. Be your fault. Yeah, and it would just be more trouble than it was worth. Like I'm trying to help this guy out. As long as you're not handing him a business card charge. as you as you no, hand it to him. Of course not. But it's just like man. And it's hard you know, to be like, hey, dude, um, can mm -hmm. I see your medical marijuana card? No, of first. course not. I'm just gonna exactly. give it to him because I know they're down on their luck. But in the back of my head, I'm always like, man, like the cops are always. It seems like they're always gunning for them, and it's just another reason for them to get harassed. And or if they just get stopped, it, it seems like they just get stopped and harassed just because they are who they are they happen to be where they are i mean i'm always That's downtown true. and seeing homeless people with all their stuff laid out all over the the uh, uh asphalt getting looked through and man if it happened to be me that was responsible for that i'd feel really bad about it so like i also do or have been uh, guilty of gifting but still it's just like i'm i'll be really stoked when all of that pressure is alleviated. Oh, yeah. It'll be so much more, and more recreational, have, you mean? Yeah. 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 Don't we have that coming up? up uh, a vote? Initiative one. Initiative petition one, yeah. yeah. Uh, so when is it going to be on the ballot? In November 2016. All right. So, so smoke the vote? Smoke the vote. Every <laughs> that, that means everybody that is sitting on their couches, right in now. their houses, because you know we're not allowed to be outside in public, right? Get up off your couch and go to those voting polls. And, make and, more, and you know, more important than that is register. Do you yes. know how yeah. many people get to the 11th hour and go, wait, I need to register? Can't I register there? And I'm like, this no. is a 7-Eleven. <laughs> well, I was thinking about this the other day. If I would have been, or some of us, would, all of us would have been a little bit more forward thinking, we would have approached last legislative session and asked for some of these things. Hey, can we have same-day voter registration? Can we have on-site voter registration? Can we do online voter registration? None of those things. I didn't really... It didn't click with me, but a lot of our demographic that we'll be looking for has these issues of not following through. We see it with the patient cards. People wait till the last minute, et cetera. It's just how a lot of these people are. We want them to be registered Procrastinators? Yes, we want them to be registered to vote. Well, you well, know you what? Know, we, it has to be done a month in advance in Nevada. Well, well, there's a great, great opportunity for all of you guys that are not registered to vote to register right now. You guys can go on to lasvegasnormal.com. And there is a link for you to register to vote. So you can not, register online? Yes. Yes. It'll take you to, I think, legalize, legal Nevada mm -hmm. or uh, some sort of link. And it'll 
take you to what you need to do to get registered to vote. But so, so you can register to vote on your computer today, but they still have to send you the card. And da, 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 da. Yes, it's a process. Yeah. But, it is know. a process, but one you can start on the couch. Sure, <laughs> absolutely. And we can start anything on the we, couch. Thank God for technology. And, and right? seriously, like I'm so nervous about that though. Like just turning the vote out. Like everyone seems to be motivated, but we saw this. I think uh, last show or the show before I was addressing this. I was at a Tom Petty concert in California the last time they had it on the ballot for recreational legalization and all these kids were sitting in a circle smoking everyone's real fired up all young people they can't wait for it to be legal i asked them are you registered to vote they all looked at me like they didn't know what the hell i was talking about <laughs> and i'm just like well you know so i had to explain you have to do it 30 days in advance da, 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 da. and this is the problem we face this is going to be our issue and no offense but uh mr adelson has recently purchased the las vegas review journal yep i don't know whether he's Planning and to do you know that the Review Journal and the Sun are all one paper? Yeah, I remember. So think about it. The, the only media outlet that we have that is free is right here, folks, right here. But and, and that's actually pretty true because if because if one person or a, or a monopoly owns the media, then who really gets freedom of speech? Who really gets the real story? The monopoly owning it. It is what it is, you know, and we just have to be consciously aware that he's donated money against legal marijuana uh, before? initiatives before in different states. And he, his family is vested in uh, rehabilitation clinics because I believe yeah. one of his close relatives, like a son or a daughter or someone like that, had an overdose. So, he, of course, you know, like many other uninformed people, I believe he, he holds marijuana uh, so semi-responsible that for that. So you Mr. Adelson gives out, gives out a, a morphine derivative, what is it called, a... Uh? The, mor the morphine de derivative? I, I'm not... Or methadone? Yeah. Derivative? I'm not methadone? methadone or something? Methadone. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, methadone. He, he op don't they operate methadone clinics? I don't know that for a fact. I know that I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, be surprised if that's what they do, but well, I'm sure Well, there's one right there on Twain and... Not Twain and Swinson, but Maryland, and, and that that is a mm. Nathan Adelson yeah. addiction clinic. But so, it's, it, just, it, it's just good to, I guess, identify your potential... I don't want to say enemies, but uh, protractors. And and, no, no. and I would just want to I just want to read a quote from uh, Tick. So this was in the International Business Times recently, and I was also quoted in there. But Tick, Tick Siegerbloom. Tick says, mm -hmm. and we could just uh, talk about this. He says, if Sheldon Adelson is the face of our opposition, we are going to win. People in Southern Nevada don't like him. <laughs> uh, I I don't I'm not sure. I would hope that that would be the case if he decides to That's do something about it. Um, I had never thought do, of that. You, I mean, do you do you believe uh, that if Sh uh, Sheldon decided to be uh, decided to uh, contribute uh, towards the opposition of IP one, whether there would be a, a reaction to that and like a backlash? I had backlash never thought of, of that. Sort. He yeah. is so yeah. polarizing, and he has donated to campaigns that have lost before numerous ones. He and you know not everything he touches is gold yeah. uh, in the political world, at least. I, I, I had never. But would you, would you never oppose him so much that you're actually going to go vote for IP one? I've never, you know, that had never crossed my mind. That, mm -hmm. like I said, his potential polarization could attract a whole new demographic. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And there was there was an interesting story that came out yesterday, actually, from the Las Vegas Review Journal about the United States Postal Service. They they put in there that the USPS has to worry more more to worry okay. about than marijuana ads. So. As you know, back in November, the United States Postal Service sent a memo to newspaper companies in Oregon stating that it would not deliver papers or other publications that included advertising for the marijuana. Yeah, I, I heard about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, right now, the the Review Journal just stated that you know mm -hmm. that they have bigger things to worry about than that. And uh, I knew well, when, yeah. when my high times when it comes, so, yeah, it, there it comes is an rad. Adelson Clinic for uh, addiction. Our our producer is showing it. us this, and his wife owns and runs that clinic, and it's a methadone clinic basically and I know it's right there on Twain and Maryland and I don't know from personal use I've just you know been, <laughs> <laughs> been by there many times and I'm like huh Adelson Clinic what methadone is that methadone milkshakes yes it is for methadone <laughs> milkshakes uh so yeah, there there may be a vested reason that he does not want cannabis reform because Ray, there's a study, an ongoing study that marijuana improves outcomes in opioid dependent subjects undergoing treatment. Uh, and I've um, been saying this I've for a long time. I've been beating that drum for a while, for sure. Um, I had yeah, a good man. Opinion. I would like to get my friend in here. He was hopelessly addicted to heroin for years and started really diving into the cannabis community and like of course you have to want to change but yes, with definitely. the help of some some concentrated cannabis he was able to beat that addiction and is now a very productive person and that's just like 
Yeah, I, I thought he was lost for sure. Yeah, you know, I thought he would be he would be the next funeral that I was going to go to, and it's just. And there have been so many funerals for pill addicted kids here in Vegas. I've been here for 24 years, and my daughter grew up here, and she left here when she was like 16. She said partially because the um, the amount of pills and the amount of drugs, and and she's like, I never want to go back there. It's just horrible there. And I'm like, well, if you avoid the right people, and she goes, well, in my generation. There was not, this is what people did. They took, they, you know, where they were taking pills, they went mm-hmm. to school to get their, you know, to get all of this stuff. She, you know, so, and we had several deaths that she attended as funerals before she was 15 or 16 years old. You know? Yeah, I think unfortunately you get them on, that you get all the kids on Adderall, you start them on Adderall, Ritalin, something like that, and then now you need to even them out or mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. else. And they're just so used to taking a pill to make them feel differently. That it that becomes an addiction. You think and they like just the, get desensitized to it? And I do. It becomes normalized. Because it's, it's a medicine. I think it's it's ridiculously, disgustingly normalized. You know, I have a bone ache. Let me take some Motrin. I have a cough. Let me take some cough syrup. It's the over medication. An allergy. Let me take some Benadryl. You know. Oh, that's my drug of choice. Oh. <laughs> well, it's some good <laughs> stuff. You know, it helps you breathe when you have anaphylactic shock kicking in. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt. Western medicine is amazing for sure, but I think it's over uh, overused. There's a UFC fighter named Uriah Faber who's fairly uh, prominent, and he, you know, his family's very like holistically minded. He doesn't eat a lot of processed foods, and and uh, he he had an interview, and they're like, well, why do you live this way? And he's like, look, you know, everyone's approaching their health the wrong way. He's like, if you have a headache, you don't go take a pill for it. There's obviously something wrong with you. You're dehydrated, or you haven't eaten enough, or you know, da, 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 da. you need to manage yourself a little bit better. And that's why he's like, I'm very rarely sick, you know. And he just went through this whole this whole thing, and uh, and I'm gonna have to agree with him, you know. It, um, I, I I could spend days and days talking about it, but mm-hmm. you know we we we've all seen the negative repercussions of over medicating. Like a friend of mine's father took Tylenol PM every day for a few years, and now has uh, shot liver? kidneys. Liver you know, damage. He has, yeah, he has to get dialysis. Not completely only for that, but it was definitely a major contributing factor in that. And he all he was trying to do is get some sleep, and now he has dialysis two or three times a week, or he'll die. So you know it is what it is. Unintended consequences. Yeah. I just pulled up some numbers from the Center for Disease Control on this, and this was reported actually today on the Huffington Post. And it says, with marijuana now legal in in some form throughout 23 states, the number of Americans who fatally overdosed on the drug last year was significant. The rate of absolutely zero deaths from marijuana overdose remained steady from last year. Sure. Okay. Now, a total of 17,465 people died from overdosing on illicit drugs like heroin and cocaine. Oh, no, 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 well, no, 25, no. 25,760 died from overdosing on prescription drugs, okay. including painkillers and tranquilizers. You see, this is another thing. They underreport the number of prescription medication deaths because they don't list the deaths as what they are. When mm-hmm. my friend died of an overdose, they didn't list it as an overdose. They, they listed it as, as like... Accident. They listed it as, yeah, or like asphyxiation from an asthma attack. Mm-hmm. Well, the asthma attack was caused by the acute amount of, of you know, all the amount of the drugs in his system. And I don't understand why that was the way... It was the same, uh, it was the same with this girl I knew that, that OD'd. They didn't mm-hmm. list it as an overdose. They listed as... Uh, uh, it was like some kind of like she grew uh, up and yeah, it, it, it was just like a they whole, can come up with anything. Yeah, it was just fixed. Well, I don't that, understand why though. It doesn't make any sense why well, they, they hide those stats or they, why they massage them. I guess they refer to they they kind of point that out in this report about alcohol. They said that more than thirty thousand seven hundred Americans died from alcohol induced causes last year. That doesn't include alcohol related deaths like drunk driving or accidents. So alcohol because poisoning, if there's any other reason besides the alcohol, they put it on that reason and mm-hmm. you know it's the same with the painkiller deaths you know and it's it's just a shame that all these people are dying over prescription painkillers when we have a safe effective medicine that what was otherwise. that stat that we have like 10 percent of the or less than 10 percent of the world's population and we use like 90 percent of the uh oxycontin in the world is distributed here in the united states I yes believe that. yes you know? actually i guess prison that. population too as well well, okay. it's just, are we really that much in pain? Do we work that much harder than the rest of the world? No, but we're <laughs> used to that much. We're, we're used to passing, pacifying ourselves or making ourselves happy through external uh, things in America, I think. So what, it's an instant they, gratification it, kind it, of it, it kind of is. I'm, I'm doing something to help myself, and it's maybe taking a pill. And in which, you know, this is one of the things that came out of the... 
uh, top 10 domestic drug policy stories of 2015 is that overdoses kill tens of thousands and harm reduction responses emerge. It says drug overdoses are now leading cause of accidental death in the United States. Uh, U.S. claims that 44,000 uh, lives are lost through accidental drug overdoses. Unbelievable. And heroin is involved in more than 8,000 of those deaths, uh, but prescription opiates are involved twice that number. Cannabis is zero. <laughs> Again, there. cannabis is zero. But there, but America is actually now looking at a way to save lives by giving uh, the reversal agent naloxone or Narcan to people that are addicted to heroin so that they can pull themselves out before they kill themselves. Uh, is this it's the anti the anti overdose drug? Is yeah. that what you're talking about? Yes. Yep. It's so I don't think we have any legislation referring to that here in Nevada yet, either pro or against. Well, I mean, I know in certain states they have a forgiveness policy that if somebody's ODing, that if they drop them off at the hospital um, or in other uh, places, I, I believe too, if they had or sought out the interaction with a police officer, that they're not going to be charged with uh, um, contributing or whatever, any type of yeah use. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and because in the past those people would just die, and now um, the. The, hos the hospitals and also the the uh, police themselves have this antidote to to give to these individuals that are ODing. Well, so and that's and that's kind of what this ar article is saying that our our drug policy in America is looking at this as more of a an, an opportunity for harm reduction. Give these people naloxone, uh, give them Narcan, so that they can Just not die. Yeah, it says basically they're um, like so. You <laughs> So we'll have access a lot of to the uh, drug fiction action going well, on. Well, access guess. to the drug is being uh, increased around the country. <laughs> Thousands of lives are being saved um, because they're, they're, they have access to the drug that they can reverse their overdose. Do you have to give it to them in the heart like in the movie? <laughs> no, no, it's not, it's not that bad. Pulp fiction. Yeah. <laughs> that's epinephrine. Style. That's epinephrine and that's straight to the heart. And, but the naloxone is a reversal, and so it's called an antagonist. There's an agonist, which is the drug. And it, what it does is it takes the body's respiration and it takes the physiological effects down. Um, what naloxone does is actually block that, and it's called an, a drug antagonist or reversal well, that agent. That sounds like a common sense, I mean, thing to implement. And usually it's by oral route, you're, you're so it's not lives. like you're dying and you're you got to shoot yourself up now. So. Mm. So I think that's one of the great things that we have coming out of 2015. And you know what? We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll talk about uh, the, the other nine domestic drug policy stories of 2015. I think some of them are really great and groundbreaking for America. You're listening to the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Now, here again, the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Weekend Nevada Cannabis News Hour, and we are special guest, Lady Rico. Hi, everybody. <laughs> she is the vice president of uh, Las Vegas Normal, and she is the lead singer for Lady Rico and the Sin City Prophets. Welcome back. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. Before we left on break, we were talking about a lot of stuff. But uh, the top 10 domestic drug policy stories of 2015 were kind of winding down the year, talking about everything that's kind of happened in America. Um, how about the great surprise that we had, har, har, but about the sky hasn't fallen on legal marijuana states? <laughs> Go figure that. Mm. Mm. Kind of, we all knew that. that. That's really just kind of like... Everybody that has been involved in this movement kind of knew that nothing. I was expecting a lot more rhetoric out of the opposers. Yeah, um, the dying of the, the light. Road. Well, you know, just attacking the ancillary issues. Like, okay, um, a lot of homeless people have moved to some of the major suburban areas, like Denver, Portland, and Seattle, more than you. I haven't heard a whisper about that. I haven't heard anything about how a lot of the kids are applying to, okay, the univer the applications for UC Boulder and like the Oregon and Washington schools are through, everyone wants to go to those schools now. 
and you haven't heard anything about oh well, we're attracting the wrong kind of kid nothing they're just sto- they're raising the fees everyone's happy you know well, not I mean, a word to to kind of talk a little bit more about that even the city count city of Las Vegas is is talking about loosening up some of their restrictions and you'll I mean after after they've seen that the operators that have opened these dispensaries that they're not there's no problems uh, that they're presenting and also too there's nobody in the community that's saying. Wow. I remember all those city council meetings where you had people standing up and they're saying, oh, I don't want this dispensary here because it's going to increase crime. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't make my kids walk by that. Yeah, don't make and- my kids walk by that dispensary. And right now there's absolutely has been there's no complaints that are coming in from the communities uh, against um, any of the local dispensaries. And I'm sure also in Clark County. And um, we don't have any in North Las Vegas well, just yet. Can you speak to any specifics? Because I know the city has been very tight on the operators or is this just kind of pillow talk at this time no i mean they, they are loosening up some of their restrictions uh their advertising, advertising. restrictions That's good. to also even providing discounts um to veterans to first-time patients well, they'd uh, look real heels they'd look like real heels if they said you can't give a discount to a veteran yeah, or a we, senior you uh, can't give discounts on medicine to people who are terminally ill i've uh, i've seen billboards for multiple dis- dispensaries around town and i thought that was going to be a no-no and with the discount so we went in one the other day and we were given free pre-rolls free free but free speaking speaking right. of free pre-roll where'd you go <laughs> we went to the source they were right up on the corner you were there oh, you, were there. Oh, okay. oh, you, were there. you didn't grab yours. oh i didn't i didn't you know didn't i didn't know i didn't know i didn't know there was an opportunity for a pre-roll i must have been <laughs> looking at something or somewhere else in the store i don't know Jeez! I, I, I next Man. time, next time, grab me and take me. I want free stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> Speaking of the dispensaries, were we just having a talk about prices? Oh recently? gosh, yeah, yeah, we were actually. Speaking, of, we were looking at some of the uh, Weed Maps prices for the delivery services that are not quite legal, <laughs> and, and then we were looking at some of the the dispensary services that are legal. And guess what? A lot of the prices at the dispensaries are kind of lower than the delivery services. They're we thought this would take a little bit longer than it did, folks, didn't we? Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, within six months they'll have price matches. Oh, no, no, no. There are six dispensaries open, and there are price matching, and they're beating the delivery services. Yeah, we, I mean, over at Las, Ve- Las Vegas sure. Relief, and we had a $35 ace of cheese, and it just flew off the shelves, and now we're doing $40. Cheesy. Uh, yeah, it was cheesy, strawberry cheesy, cough. cheesy, and yummy, and and now we're we have strawberry cough for forty dollars, um, and before that we were doing fire lane kush for forty dollars for an eighth. Oh, Euphoria and, uh, had ten dollar grams of OG on mm-hmm. sale the other day. Yeah, I mean, right. they are really. I mean, Nevada Pure. I'm looking at the the back of the Elevate magazine mm-hmm. here in Kathy's picture. Um, they had what two hundred and thirty dollar ounces of some that's some of their yes. weed that's that was not tested. Price, yeah. It's mm-hmm. just like you know. Uh, they're trying their best, and I think what we were getting at, I mean, pre- pre-production, what we were talking about is these delivery services have been... Uh, uh, Operating? How, how, how do I put this? No, what's the word I'm looking for? Blessed with the non the amount of the lack of competition, and they've been able to get away with the uh, what they've been charging for so long that they didn't really see a need to change their game once the dispensaries opened up. They thought that the shops would be just hamstrung by the taxes and there would be no way they could compete with the prices for a long period of time. So they were just going to relax and uh, do what they do. And well, the stuff that you're not seeing and stuff that that maybe you, you guys aren't hearing about is that a lot of these delivery services are actually being busted and there are not news reports on it. There are not stories on it. You know how I'm finding out about it? People are calling me and saying, well, my regular service, you know, Do got you busted. Think What's going down, on? Yeah. Got no. shut down. Or people not being on social media for a long time. And then I go, oh, wait, they had a delivery service? Am I dumb? I mean, that's mm-hmm. obviously backlash from the dispensary owners putting pressure on the sheriff I saw on television when he Yeah, but it's not being tele. It's, it's not. There's not no the media. Line. Why? Who knows? Oh, be- well, I know. You know, I, I they think want them to keep operating so that they can go after them. Is that yeah? What you think? I'm, that's no. what my theory is. I mean, I mean, once, it's, once it's, the, they the got a whole pool to feed to from operating. the sheriff. <laughs> So they, they don't want it to dry up. So, oh, so, okay, listen. If it's all in the news, mm. delivery services are being busted, folks. Don't you think that more would shut down and leave? That's I don't true. know. I, 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 don't, see, I see where, I see where you're, not, you're saying did, that. Same. What about in 2010? Nobody closed down. Everybody they all got warned, popped. actually. Just, they, mm. they got popped, and then they all reopened again, and they're just like, oh, help. We're just going to keep rolling. I think and it was cost the, of doing business, they were saying. Simple as that. I don't know. And another thing I'd like to touch on is 
now the legal state license places are carrying the edibles and are carrying the topicals mm-hmm. and the CBDs yeah. and all the stuff we want. The lines Start, are expanding. Yeah. We still need more products though on the on this show. Yeah, they're they're getting Definitely. there. I mean, today today. Um, Evergreen Organics re, uh, started launching their line of edibles. They're they're mm-hmm. starting to carry them at yeah. Inyo Fine dis- Cannabis Dispensaries today. What, what are they carrying over the brownies and maybe chocolate uh, chunk brownie yep. macaroons? I saw. Well, I saw. I'm not sure what they're carrying. I haven't been over there yet, but I did. I've been pe- keeping an eye on Evergreen. They've been packaging up cookies and brownies mm. and all that, and I believe it's all past What's testing. The, do you know the milligrams in the cookies? Are they strong cookies? Are they 10 milligram cookies? Are they 100 milligram cookies? Uh, <laughs> How, how floored am I going to get? Let, let me know. Let I me, need let to me, know. Let me pull up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how, how tolerant is your system. I like I like I like low <laughs> dose edibles. So uh, the the honey bear that I've tried over at Nevada Pure, it's, it's perfect. It, it's like a tablespoon, I believe, or I, I'm doing about a teaspoon a night, and uh, it's pleasant every other night to help with sleep, um, and also make watching a movie before going to bed too uh, way more pleasant as well. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I got a little bit of giggles as well. It's it's a it's a fun edible. Sure. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I will, we'll have to get back to you on that because they don't have it on their menu yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, in the, our back to our domestic drug policy stories, uh, the marijuana, and we're experiencing that, the marijuana majority solidifies. More people are in favor of cannabis than are against it at this point in America. So with the tide and has definitely not only turned, mm-hmm. is now just overwhelmingly in cannabis support. I'm seeing a lot more police officers come out and say, to say that you know that they're tolerant of it, or and and as evidence in different concerts, I've seen people getting busted for uh, being too drunk, but not smoking a joint right in front of people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I guess the tolerance is is I tripled or or quadrupled, I think, in the past couple of years. That's I, awesome. What do you think? What do you I don't think? know. I've been honestly scared away from a lot of the local venues because of their overly aggressive policies against cannabis. So I've kind of, sh- I'm very careful about where I can go see shows at this point. Well, I'll tell you right now, MGM Grand Gardens, they are awesome. <laughs> really, they, they, that they uh, that you can medicate there in the Gardens Arena, and, and no, there's no security that's going to hassle you either. Hard time. Well, you see, in my former life, what I show took care of asking? animals. Mm-hmm. I took care of animals, and Dead so and I was walking in. <laughs> I was walking into the Grand uh, Arena, and one of my students had a dog laying mm-hmm. down, and I walked up to her, gave her a hug, and I said, "Hey, what's going on?" She's like, "Oh," we, so we talked, and I said, "So is that dog for like uh, drugs or?" And she goes, no, it's kind of just for, like, firearms and bombs. We really don't care. And she goes, and plus this crowd. Yeah, but, yeah, but the dog hit down where my pre-rolls were, too. Oh. <laughs> and she didn't even know what it was Just <laughs> for the record, what concert was this at? The, the Grateful Dead. Dead. Okay, so <laughs> if you're at a yeah. Bocelli, Andrea Bocelli show, they might not be as. Fish in a barrel. Yeah. Well, you know, I've, I've actually been at reggae marley concerts at certain places and yeah we've been hassled so it just kind of depends i think on the venue that's ooh, yeah like brooklyn bowl is not a good venue no, no. well it used lately, to be I they've thought. been actually really good lately I, I played a show there not too long ago and i Very could cool. smell things and i didn't see people getting hassled so you know, <laughs> it was nice well we can hope right that on. those uh how do i put this I, I guess a place for us to congregate and enjoy music spend money and uh be calm and all that kind of stuff have a good time see the shows i hope they continue to do that i heard a bad story about the title of the article was why the doors never played las vegas and (laughs) the story goes that jim morrison and his manager came to vegas to scout out a venue and they're out in front of a club and they're smoking a joint and this bouncer comes over because he doesn't like the long hairs and pulls out his blackjack and cracks both of them in the back of the head and split them open and this whole thing and he said i'll never play vegas and they never did and that's why the doors never played vegas so it's just little incident like you know i don't you know who knows what could have happened you know elvis came to vegas and stayed for a long time and like it's just a well, lot because of things, i mean like, you it, it could have changed you the just, whole town the you world, just this, heard life, who knows vegas is more tolerant of pills and other addiction than cannabis or they used to be thank goodness they're changing i, I, I sure. think i think things are changing I, I think that as they dispensaries open up the cultivation facilities open up that the that there's less um it, i think that people are feeling the police and other community members are feeling that it, it hasn't been the end of the world since these dispensaries and cultivation facilities have opened. They're, they're creating jobs. They're now paying taxes. 
the patients that are coming from out of state and also in state too are, are paying taxes to support the community and support our education system as well. I follow a page on Facebook called Laughlin Buzz. It follows all the happenings in that community. And uh, they had a grow house recently come online and the locals are like, oh, you can smell it when you walk by. And I, I enjoy watching kind of the push and pull between the locals because that's a much smaller community yeah. down there. And there's this big like, you know, is it OK? Is it not? You know, how is this going to roll? I, I, I enjoy watching that. So well, this whole thing about the smell, it let's we tend to forget that this is a flower. It's supposed to smell. It's a flower. They it's fragrant. <laughs> it's yeah. fragrant. I, it's just people are so smell, set. People know? are so set in their ways. They're like, oh, you know, like they know what the smell is, and they know that they don't like what it smells like. They don't. I don't think they like don't dislike the smell. They know what it is, though. You know, ah, I think that's so the it's like it's a in their slap head. in the face. Well, it's just all in their head. You know, they're like, ah, it's like it's the dope in that building. It's right the there. The you know. <laughs> I can't believe it's right there and I got to walk by it. You know, they just can't get over that. So like, we'll see you once again. Well, as time I goes mean, by, as sad as it is, become... as time goes by, they will all pass from this earth <laughs> and the young ones will arise. No doubt. Just saying. Well, on that note, I got a, okay. <laughs> I got a weird little story about the NCAA is uh, easing their marijuana penalties because <laughs> it's you know, we've time. seen a lot of these sports organizations really hammer these athletes for using uh, cannabis recreationally or medicinally. I remember Ricky Williams in the NFL got just, he was forced to retire and he was one of the best running backs in the NFL because he just would not compromise on his idea that he wasn't using a performance enhancing drug and they had no business sticking their nose in his business. Wasn't there an Olympics uh, and a, uh, a person in the Olympics, a snowboarder that tested positive for cannabis a and they ruled too. and yeah. they ruled and they, yeah. And, yeah, and they ruled the, that the uh, snowboarder w it w didn't uh, wasn't in performance enhancing mm -hmm. drug. But I I disagree that on snowboarding because when you're high and you're yeah, snowboarding, that you get creative, don't you? <laughs> you get creative with anything when you get high. I don't care if you're painting, snowboarding, singing, writing music, it's it's a creative channel opener. I know, a lot of the times and, uh, a lot of the times I can't even work cuz I do a lot of programming and unless I'm high, it's like yeah. when I go at it and before I've smoked, I, I get frustrated and I'm like it's oh. it's not a good thing and it's like so I take a step oh, yeah. back medicate well, and I now I can work. I remember Julio <laughs> Cesar Chavez got fined $900,000 for testing positive for a fight. I remember Nate Diaz got suspended for five years for testing positive for weed and then Ronda Did, Rousey came out the yeah. next week and said I don't want to fight in Vegas anymore because of this. And there was a and Vegas prohibition isn't there? Well, yeah, he's like still on fight? probation. Uh, but the NCAA has been hammering him for a while. And I think that the fact that they and the big power conferences are easing up on it is really well, going to make... Well, they're going to lose some of their best players. Yeah, it that's what it's that. all about. Yeah, they don't want these players to go Be somewhere else, like the University of Colorado and... Uh, Oh, Ross Rigobalti was the snowboarder for the Olympics. That was like go. the first. That oh. was the first marijuana or cannabis-related incident for the but, Olympics uh, that came up before, before Michael Phelps. There was a guy who won the Iditarod dog race who was an avid pot smoker, and they were just like, "We're going to disqualify you." And he's like, "I'm going to be stoned and still whoop your ass," and you know, <laughs> kind of made a point of it and kind of shut him up because they didn't want to be any more, I guess, embarrassed than they already were or whatever. But <laughs> still, it's just these NCAA players do not get paid they don't receive any actual compensation it's is it college yeah this is all college yeah. these kids so i'm so you know, they're, they're knocking out some of their best recruits well, prior well, to they're, e they're easing up on it they don't want to lose these huh. kids so yeah. the power conferences and the ncaa are both backing off because like I, I feel like since this big push to you know unionize college players and get them more rights as this uh, argument becomes more prolific they have to try to they got you know, something's got to give, and this is one of those somethings that's got to give. If we're not going to pay you, we're gonna we're gonna not punish you so much for smoking weed, or we're gonna do this, we're gonna do that, we're gonna try to work with you a little bit more. Sure. So I'm, you know, whatever it is, I'm happy with it. Baby steps in the right direction. He oh, was he stripped was... of his gold medal in 1998. That snowboarder, according to, see, that's oh, insane. Wow. The IOC took his gold medal away. That's just insane. I'm so, I, I, yeah, well, if you're see, the best in the world, you're the best. Times are changing, man. Um, so think about it. All the groundwork is well laid for marijuana legalization efforts in this next year. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what we've been building up to. Um, as, as a nonprofit organization for medical cannabis, 
We can doesn't really take an official stance on on uh, legalization, except for if it, it if it's going to hurt patients. We're right. not really against it, um, um, and individually, I think many of us are for it. Yeah, this the the IP one initiative that they have here in Nevada does not affect the medical program whatsoever. It's a completely separate thing, and personally. I can only see good coming of it. If if this passes and everybody can use without a card, isn't it going to be easier for those of us with a card to get more benefits out and of more this rights? And to leverage us? It's like, hey, we went through the process. We've got the card. We've been legal this whole time. Now anybody can use it. What are you going to give me for going and doing this extra mile and getting the card and becoming a legal patient? We just got to be sure that I mean, they don't try we, to roll back. What are we doing about that, Jason? So the Nevada Dispensary Association, uh, in addition to some of the Marijuana Council uh, members, is actively working um, on their own and also with the uh, assistance of WeCan, too, as well. We are trying to reduce the amount of time it takes for a, a Nevada medical marijuana patient to get their card initially and also the renewals. The, the biggest problem is the initials, at least me personally, from what I'm finding working at the dispensary, it's taking, I, when I talk to patients, it's about two to three months for their initial, uh, to get their, initially to get their cards. And it's more closer to two and a half, uh, two months and two weeks for them to actually have the card in hand. It, it, so what we're, what we're doing, and if you look on the, if you go into the WeCan Facebook, you'll see some of the things that we're asking uh, to patients to provide so we can give this information uh, to the state of Nevada, letting them know that, you know, they may not know at the higher levels uh, how long the process is actually taking patients from their initially uh, sending that $25 to the state, getting that application, then taking that onto their physician, and then, ta you know, then taking that um, uh application bringing it back to the state and then waiting return for it to come back again so they can go to the dmv and so what we need from you guys is to uh go on to the website or contact jason um directly and tell them and and if you don't mind tell him how long it initially took you to get the card mm -hmm. or jason. how long it uh, took you to get your renewal jason s at we can 702.org mm -hmm. yeah and th that was that was when we held our last summit. That was the number one concern from the patients shorten that we the card had time. was to shorten revamp the card, the card time, time the, the program. Not just shorten the card time, um, the, to revamp the card program in in whole. And part of the marijuana council that I sit on with the legislative, uh, the legislative board we looked at this whole issue and it's not just the card time it's it's the card time the cost. amount of t uh, the amount of cost the renewal if somebody's a chronic patient or has chronic pain or is is chronically wounded they're not going to get better by definition chronic means that it ain't gonna get better have that card for three years so mm. to to get your card maybe for three years if you're instead qualified of, as disabled you should have it for life uh. i think that that's a great idea um, seriously I don't, I don't i don't think you're I, not going to be undisabled magically I, someday i would agree with you i think you're going to have a hard time arguing that a patient yeah. will be able to pay one time and then have that card for life it's yeah. got to be extreme circumstances if they're qualified disabled mm -hmm. you're not like i said i'm just going to lay it out there right like that you can't ever be undisabled like that's what that designation is for it means you cannot you know if you've you're, got 100 so, percent yeah. disability so you're saying a 30-year designation on, on how good your card is then as for re lifetime of your residency, if you're a Nevada resident, mm -hmm. and yeah, you get it, it period. It, I don't see why mm -hmm. it's so hard. I mean, Jesus. And, and I don't know how the hell you would implement that, for though. 25 mm -hmm. years. No, that's true. In Arizona, <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Some of those people from Arizona don't know how to drive. Um, just that's I a can, side note. You look at our exits on our freeway ramps, I see all the gouges. I would argue we don't know how to drive here either. <laughs> They're from Arizona. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, when I lived in L.A., and I saw their freeways that were old and clogged, didn't have any of those gouges from people hitting them all drunk like ours. That's when I knew that it was uh, things were just a little bit different here. Oh my goodness! Oh, yes, buddy. All right. Um, so, yeah, the, um, and at that meeting, the uh, the other things that we're going to be working on is 
retaining our ability to grow as a patient. Yes. That's a big one. Huge um, one. The concentrate laws. I mean, we understand that they passed these laws trying to stop people from blasting butane in their garages and blowing themselves <laughs> up. But mm -hmm. as a patient, I should be able to make, we should be able to make our own medicines, our own butter cannabis and our cannabis and oil. Coconut, you know, coconut oil, yeah. Oils and all that stuff that's safe. You know what? The thing is, I want to, uh, yeah, I want to chime in on that one because how many people have blown themselves up in their garage here in Nevada over cannabis? I don't I, think we've I had any, have we? Less one, than a one, handful. Two? Less than a handful. Now, Anybody how die? many people? No. No. Okay. No. Now, how many people have have driven drunk and uh, from a casino and um, have died on the freeway? Lots. This happened the other day, actually. Lots, lots of people. And the thing <laughs> is, is that so we're not going to outlaw people drinking in casinos. Of course not. So why why outlaw blasting if one person dies? Or like. I don't know. It's just, for me, it's like I, I, I don't think it's safe to drink and drive, but they allow people to, you know, serve in bars. I, I, I agree. I'd like to see on-site consumption at some of these dispensaries and facilities at some point. Um, yeah, me but, too. you know, about the blasting at home, what do you if think? it's non-combustible, I'm good with that. If you're doing, like... I, you know, Roth and pressing? Again, well, no, damn, you see, one. but then, you know, I... I, I See, I, 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 it's a very difficult issue. Yeah, I, I think it could be very easily changed as Bash. long as they change it to like people have change been it to non-volatile in there. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, maybe just saying non-volatile. But then once again, you know, who has the money to get a CO2 rig at home? Nobody. <laughs> but and, but the the thing is, what about making RSO? What about some of these people? They're treating their own cancer, yeah, making okay, RSO. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can I can go along with that. For sure. That's, and that's what I'm concerned of. I'm not just concerned about dabbers. I understand that it's dabbing, one tiny dab can kill your pain for like hours and hours and hours. I understand that. You should recriminalize nonviolent behavior. That's if true. We're try you're, it seems like they're just trying to create criminals in order to, I don't want to say pad their margins or I don't know what's going on. Well, but there's going to be a drop in. Sense. There's going to be a drop in certain illegal behavior and so they need to take it up somewhere else. Is that what the if you I think is happening? I don't want to I don't want to think it like that. I I, I would l not like to think of it that uh, aggressively or that maliciously. Um I would like to think there was something just kind of a push and pull. Like if you give us this, we got to get something back. But really it, oh, it like seems a, it just seems legislative just, compromise. It, it can't like it is malicious. I don't, you know, I, it's hard for me to come to any other conclusion, even though I don't want to think that they would go about it that way. Um, right. I really just don't enjoy having people who were forced to grow their own for such a long period of time now at the drop of a hat now be a criminal for doing what they were told to do for so long. Oh, that's not going to happen. That's here. not this okay. This is not going to happen. You know, that's not okay. Well, even IP1 allows people to grow six plants. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. All so, people? Yes. All people. All people, patient or not. That's very cool. That's very, very but, cool. But mm -hmm. it has a limit of 12 plants per household, so you can't uh. pack a bunch of people <laughs> in a house and do a grow house. And, you know, and it, and it has it has restrictions, you know, that you can't give it to minors, you know, even though it's le if it passes, it goes legal for everyone. It doesn't include minors. And if oh, you're of course. if you get caught giving it to a kid, you still get in trouble. It, you know, it, it, most of the stuff is very reasonable. There's really no step back in IP one. It's really just a push forward for the people. And who you are know, patients. It, putting that awareness out there is really important because I've heard a lot of patients that have. Um, I've heard a lot of patients that have been complaining, like, you know, it's going to mess with my rights or, you know, they're, they're looking at all these technicalities and forgetting the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, how, how much of a push forward would it be for, for us as a community to get this recreational standing in our state? It's, it's like the ultimate goal, what we've been fighting for. Yeah. And, and we, it would I get know. a lot and, of people who are in the group, closet really excited, too. For one, and for one group to, like, to, to say, oh, well, I don't want them to have their rights because I don't, because, you know, it's going to take away something from me. As patients, I think that we can push for more since we got a medical card mm -hmm. than, uh, than in rights. And that IP1 allows Pleasure. other people to not become criminals in the state of Nevada or not exactly. be criminals make, when they're just performing you know, natural yeah. behavior that they think in, in feeding their endocannabinoid system. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I, and I've heard people saying, oh, the bill is imperfect that, you know, because the alcohol industry is in control of it for the first three years, this and that. So let's not vote for it. They realize well, guess that, who paid for realize it? That, realize that. Realize that. If this vote, if this doesn't pass this year, 
and they're saying, well, it's three years till we can make changes. Well, guess what? If it doesn't pass this year, it's going to be three years till there's anything else on the books to even vote whoa, for. Whoa, and whoa. then three if years all. after that. So we're <laughs> looking on. at six yeah. years. If, if at all. <laughs> at it's all. like I was talking to one of the main, I, I guess he was a lobbyist. And I told him, I said, what happens if this doesn't pass? He says, I don't know if there will be a next time because it's hard to get money to donate. It, excuse me. It's, it's hard to get people to donate money to losing campaigns. That's if right. you know you're a loser, they're not going to donate. That's why this California thing such a mess. It's hard. It becomes harder and harder to raise money every time you lose. So if we lose this, it's going to be a hard sell to go back to those same donors because once again cannabis community as we know even though there's a lot of us the real community is fairly small you're gonna have to go back to the same people asking for money for the same thing all over again after that one after the one initiative petition didn't get turned in and all that like mm -hmm. it's been a shaky road that we've gone down whole semi-legalization thing it's, it's been nuts we all know it we cannot fuck this up <laughs> no. i don't know how to put this more bluntly no. I, I'm in total agreement with you. I'm in total agreement with you. And um, uh, the reason we have we have our Elevate magazine out here in front is we do have an article in Elevate talking about uh, what We Can does in the community. Um, I want everybody to check it out. Elevate uh, has been really kind to us over the years, as uh, as has Vegas Cannabis magazine. But um, we do have an article this month in Elevate. It's their give back issue to talk about that. Um, and, and you um, know what? Uh, we have, what, like two minutes left? Yeah. What, gotta, what, yeah. what do we got sure. going on? Well, we got to thank our sponsors, Nevada Pure. Check them out. They're running, what is it, $230 ounces? 15% yeah. mm -hmm. off to all veterans uh, wow. at any given time. You don't, and, and every day you can use that. And in your fine cannabis dispensaries, thank you very much. Um, they are starting to carry edibles there now, too. So if Chocolate you, chunk brownie, yeah, yum, so yum. Make sure you go check those guys out. Make, you know, support the people who support us, you know? Yes, um, First Friday this, this month has been canceled because it falls on New Year's Day and... No one wants to go out in that cold after partying out the night before. Okay. So it has been canceled this month, but we will be back in February in full swing. Definitely. We have uh, the benefit for Bunny Cunningham coming up on January 17th. January 17th. It's a Sunday from 4 p.m. till midnight. A backstage bar and grill. Stage bar and building. Right across the street. From on South Fremont Street. Tell your mama, your grandma, your aunties. Whoever, bring your friends, everybody. Absolutely. Right on. Uh, what else do we have going on? Well, we have our patient uh, support group on January 9th, which is Saturday, 2 p.m. at the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf on Maryland Parkway. And our next summit that was recently announced. Yeah. Oh, our next summit. Next summit. The, the next cannabis workshop is going to be on Thursday, February 11th. This is the follow-up to our first one. where we're uh, This one here, we're going to be showing you how to become a citizen lobbyist. Um, to become your best own advocate and make your voice effective in 2016, 2017. And then we're going to start to form committees to forward the goals that uh, were the most most important for everyone to work on. All right. The most important goals were patient card access, DUI nanograms, ability to go, grow, uh, grow, concentrates, gun rights. And then there were 15 other individual uh, comments. So if you guys want to come out and do some work, come on out to the library and you'll feel great that you did. I'd like to thank Lady Rako. Thanks for having and me. And Vegas All Med Radio, of course. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next year. Woohoo! Bye. Bye. Next year.